Hi, Don Cavallis here from Four Dog Stove Company. It's going to be about uh, what I call potology. Well, what's potology? If you've got a fire or a stove, you need a pot. So what I've done over the years, I've uh, kind of studied and looked at different pots, and I just wanted to share some of the information I've uh, gathered and learned from experience, and in cooking mostly with biofuels. I prefer to burn wood myself. That's what I do. I make stoves to be burned with wood. A lot of people are new to that because there's been almost a whole generational or two generations where people haven't used wood. One thing we forget, over two billion people are still cooking with wood. Uh, so it's still a very, very, very widely used, that or any, some sort of biomass, which could be dung, wood, twigs, uh, briquettes made from paper waste, sawdust waste, etc. So we've got a lot of information to cover, and so I guess we'll get started here. Well, the first thing I guess we got to, I, I want to kind of explain if, some differences what we have, which most all of us are familiar with, would be the four ounce fuel canister, which it normally has an isobutane type uh, formula. Uh, a lot of people think this is much greener than using uh, biomass. But now if you look at it here, most of these come from Japan. Japan has no petrochemical industry of its own at all. So the petrochemical they get has to come normally from the Middle East, which is transported to Japan. They have no iron ore industry. So the steel has to be transported to Japan, manufactured into the small tin, then transported back to the United States, then distributed amongst the United States, and out of this one tin will boil approximately eight liters of water. And that, when I say boil, I'm talking about a rolling boil, which is 212 degrees, or once water becomes vapor. Now, to give you an equivalency of that, 12 ounces of alcohol will do the same thing with an efficient alcohol burner. 10 ounces of esmet will do the same thing, which will do one package and a half. 12 ounces of charcoal will do that, perform that same function. And 24 ounces of twigs. When we look at that pound and a half of uh, twigs over there, which would normally be completely discarded as a fuel, and if you look at one acre of woods as we see right here, will provide the user one cord of firewood, not twigs, firewood, per acre per year. And that's four by four foot by eight foot long. Now imagine how many pounds of twigs that same acre will provide and how which is actually creating more of a footprint on earth, that pound and a half of twigs or that four ounce canister of petrochemicals. So that's for you to decide. When used properly, you're leaving little or no trace. Because the one thing you have to remember, we do one of three things when we go to the brush. We leave it the way we found it, we leave it worse, or we leave it better. That's up to us. And if you collect a wood properly, use proper burn techniques, which we'll be covering some, we have left at best no trace, we've left it the same, and maybe even possibly a little bit better. Now the one thing I found when burning uh, biomass, when I was a young man, or there used to be a saying, that kid doesn't know the difference between shit and shinola. What we have here, we have shit. What we have here, we have shinola, which is basically shoe polish, which is paraffin base. The nice thing with your biomass stoves is that you can burn anything from shit to shinola to cook your meal. Now, we'll go to some of the BTU characteristics. Dung has a BTU equivalency of 6,000 BTUs per one pound of dry material because you've got to remember dung from uh, a herbivore, goat, sheep, horse, donkey, camel, is all biomass. And there's a, about a, still close to a billion people who still cook with dung through the world. It's one of the most popular fuels still to this day in India. But it has a low catalyst. So you've got approximately 6,000 BTUs per one pound of material. Isobutane has approximately 19,000 BTUs of energy per one pound of material. Alcohol, depending on the type of alcohol, this type, this is methyl alcohol, is about 8,400 BTUs. You go to pure alcohol, you're up to about 12,000 BTUs. Your esbit or hexamine is 13,000 BTUs. Charcoal is about also close to 14,000 BTUs. In wood is 7,000 BTUs. Now what does that mean? 
it means there's 7,000 BTUs of one pound of dry wood material. But because wood normally consists of, even when it's uh, seasoned, of anywhere between 15 to 20% moisture, clean dried wood is 12% moisture, you have to deduct that from your heat value. The other thing you have to do when doing that, you also have to calculate that it takes 1% of the energy in that wood for every 1% of moisture. And that's when people say, well, can I burn green wood? Yeah, you can burn green wood, but you have almost a zero heat value because of the fact of the energy necessary to get the moistures and the volatiles out of the wood before it actually becomes a fuel source. That's why if you look at charcoal, which charcoal is basically wood that's been carbonized. In other words, all the moisture, all the volatiles have been taken out of it, so it's pure energy is twice the amount of energy per pound than you're basically dry wood. Now I do find when people ask which works better, like if you take clean dried wood, I find if you have a 16 to 18% moisture content, it actually burns a little bit better than if it's clean dried because clean dried will tend to burn too fast, thus not allowing the transfer of heat to the pot and then thus to the contents of the pot. 